This video is about how to verify the integrity and authenticity of a Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon ISO file download. The following are some of the terms used in producing this video. The definitions are very short and not conclusive. You can refer back to this page using a timestamp in the notes below the video, but I would like to point out the integrity verification uses checksums and the authenticity verification uses a digital signature. Outcomes. What you should be able to do after watching this video, download all Linux Mint 21 files to a Windows computer, download the Windows installer for the GNU PG or GNU Privacy Guard, which is otherwise known as GPG, and install GPG. Verify the integrity of a downloaded Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon ISO file and verify the authenticity of a downloaded Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon ISO file. Requirements, a Windows computer, and an internet connection. And the next three slides contain additional sources of info, a list of the software used in making this video, and a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop this video to read the slides. Here I am at the Linux Mint 21 Vanessa download page, which is at linuxmint.com slash download.php. The version I'm going to download is the Cinnamon edition. So I'm going to just click on this download button, download. Now this video is about how to do an integrity and authenticity check of Linux Mint Cinnamon. I will need to have all the files necessary to do this in the same folder, so I have set the Chrome browser to allow me to put the files in one of my project directories. So I will download the integrity and authenticity checksum files, these two down here, first. Because we are using Windows, with these files, I will have to right-click and use Save Link As instead of simply downloading the file. So right-click, Save Link As, and here I am in Para 1 Project Mint Sin 21 files. Click Save, and for the SHA-256SUM.TEXT.GPG, Save Link As, and it's going to go in the same place. Click Save. Now, for the ISO file that contains Linux Mint, I'm going to look at the download mirrors and pick one that is the closest to me. And in my case, that would be the Purdue Linux Users Group. And this time, I'm not going to do a right click, just simply click on it. And it's going to go to the same place. Click Save. I will take several minutes for this file to download. I'll come back when this file is downloaded. So now this file is downloaded. We'll have to wait till the zero seconds left leaves down here. Okay, there it is. And in the next section, I'll have to click this verify button and demonstrate how to do an integrity check. Now that the files to install Linux Mint 21 have been downloaded, the next step is to verify that the Linux Mint ISO has not been corrupted during the download process. You could go all the way up to the installation guide, but it will be simpler to click on the green Verify button. This takes you directly to the Verify Your ISO Image section of the installation guide. Since the SHA-256 sums have already been downloaded, I will go to the Integrity Check section. In this section, there is a green hint section that includes a link, how to verify the ISO image on Windows. Click on that link. After the page comes up, go to the preparation section, step two. It provides a link to the GNUPG.org site. GNUPG stands for GNU Privacy Guard. A GNU is a large, dark African antelope with a beard. You will have to download an installable release of GNU PG for Windows. Notice that you will be expected to click on the signature link 
in the Windows section of the GNU PG binary releases. So click on the link and scroll down until you come to the download SIG release shown in the instructions for Windows. And there it is. Download this release and make sure this file is in the same folder as your Linux Mint ISO file. And you'll notice it in my same folder where the other files have been downloaded. So I'm just going to click Save. We're not going to use the GNU Privacy Guard or GPG now, but it will be necessary to have GPG to verify the authenticity signature later on. Make sure that the download a GNU PG exe file is in the same folder as the other Linux Mint files by using Windows File Explorer. So I open up Windows File Explorer and local C and then I'm going to go to where everything should be, Files, and there it is. Click on the exe file to install GPG or GNU Privacy Card. And do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Click yes. And it says welcome to the installation. And I'm going to just click next. Here's the license. Next. And then install. And then click next. And it's completing and it's going to show you a readme file. If you want, you can go ahead and check this readme file out, but I'm going to close it and close Windows File Explorer. And I'm going to go back to the directions. And step three, basically they're going to ask that you open up Windows PowerShell. But I'm going to open up PowerShell ISC. And to do that, go to the start, Type in PowerShell, Windows PowerShell ISC. I'm going to make it smaller so it fits over here. I recommend the ISC integrated scripting environment version because it includes a bunch of help messages when using PowerShell. The help makes this version slower, but I can use all the help I can get when working with Windows. In fact, PowerShell ISE is no longer an active development, but Microsoft currently has no plans to remove it from Windows. If you require an up-to-date ISE, you will have to install Visual Studio Code with a PowerShell extension. Now that I've got it set up, I'm going to use CD to go to the directory where all my Mint 21 files are stored. And that's basically a backslash, and then I get a choice of where I can go. Select it by using a tab. Do another backslash. Again, project. And then I've still got to go down and then tab again. And then in the files directory. And once I'm in that directory, I can do an ls, which is a Linux command, but PowerShell accepts some Linux commands to see what is in that directory. And there are all the files that I've downloaded so far. So now I'm going to come back here to the left and scroll down to the integrity check section. And then where it says code, select all. Click on the select all. And then right click. And then I can copy. And then I'm going to come oh, back to PowerShell. Right click and paste. And what this is going to do is going to take a look at a file and give me a SHA-256 sum. So it's not file name ISO, but it's Linux Mint 21. So I'm going to delete the file name ISO and then type in an L, an I, and then hit tab. And once that's done, it's going to take a few seconds to run, hit enter, and it's going to come up with a SHA-256 sum. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take and make sure that this hexadecimal number right here, or the SHA-256 sum, is the same as in the SHA-256 sum.txt file. And the way to do that, 
we go back here to the integrity check section, click on the command prompt section, and it gives you the directions right there. Basically, we're going to use find, find, and then because this is PowerShell ISE, I have to use triple quotes. Then I copy this that was given to me by Cert Utility or Cert Util. Copy. Make sure you get the first and last. Paste. And then another triple quotes. Then space SHA. 256 sum.txt. Hit enter. And it found this SHA 256 sum in the SHA 256 sum.txt file. So, so this is a valid checksum. That means you have passed the integrity check as long as these numbers are the same. If it did not find it in the SHA-256-SUM.txt file, you would get nothing on this line. If you want to see what's in the SHA-256-SUM.txt file, you could use get content hit a space and then put sh and tab again and make sure that the text file is and then hit enter. You should see three checksums. Please note that the one we're using now is for the Linux Mint Cinnamon ISO. The other checksums are of other desktop versions of Linux Mint. Another quick way to verify if the checksum for the downloaded Linux Mint ISO file is equal to the checksum in the SHA-256-SUM.txt file is to use the following command, and I'm going to use an open parenthesis here, get file hash, and then I give it the file name, L, I, tab, and then I'm going to give it an algorithm, dash algorithm, A, hit tab, and then SHA, 256 and then closing parentheses then hash and then space and EQ for equal and then another space and this time I'm going to put one quote in I'm going to get the cinnamon 64-bit checksum copy it and then I'm going to do a paste closing quotation in this case it was only one then hit enter. Now if both checksums are the same, it will return true. If the checksums are not the same, you will get a false returned. So it's true. This completes the integrity check. And in the next section, I will demonstrate how to do an authenticity check. This section covers the authenticity check part of the Linux Mint ISO verification. In this section, I will demonstrate how to verify that the file you downloaded from the Linux Mint Mirror is an authentic Linux Mint file and has not been corrupted or changed in any way at the download mirror site. The GPG program generates a hash that is encrypted with a private key. Both this hash and the private key require a public key to be decrypted. We will have to download the public key so GPG can authenticate the Linux Mint ISO image that you downloaded from your mirror site. So to do that, go up here to top left, click on the back arrow, and let's scroll down to the authenticity checks area. Now if you look here, you will see that there are three different ways to download the public key automatically, and one way to download the public key manually. I will demonstrate the automatic download, and then use GPG to verify that the public key was downloaded. So let's just go to the first one, do a select all, do a copy, right click, copy, move over to the PowerShell, right click again, and paste. There's the entire command, GPG, and then it asks to find a key server from Ubuntu at port 443 and hit enter. 
and it takes a second. Now, right here it says fully qualified error ID, native command error, and remote exception and all this stuff. And unfortunately, this is a PowerShell ISE not playing very nicely with GPG. So if I want to verify that it is has been downloaded, I will go to gpg dash dash list keys. And there we've got the key that's been downloaded. Now, since this is a fresh GPG install, this is the first downloaded public key. So there's only one. So if you don't see the key here, your best bet would be to go back to the directions and download the public key manually. So let's go back and I'm going to scroll down a little bit more and I'm going to copy and paste this command and run it. This is step two and this is going to verify. Select all, copy, do a paste here, hit enter. The one thing we have to note here is GPG good signature from Linux Mint ISO signing key. Authentication has passed. Back to an explanation of the warning. Now let's go here and read this text here. And it says, as long as it says good signature from Linux Mint signing key and with a fingerprint matching the one shown above, and that you use to download the key, then that means your download is authentic. In case it was tampered with, the message would be bad signature. And it says you can ignore the warning that comes after that, expect it and perfectly normal. And that means that this Linux Mint file has been authenticated and you're ready to go ahead and create a Linux Mint installation. Thank you.